Good morning, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com and the Flourish Academy. It's Friday! I hope you had a great week and you're super excited for the weekend. So today's quick tip is about Lightroom and Photoshop. So people often ask me what the difference is between buying them as the standalone version and purchasing them through the Creative Cloud subscription. And so uh, I'm going to tackle that quickly. But I will say this, I loathe monthly payments and I would much rather purchase something at its full price than have a monthly payment. And people are gonna say, well, it's only $10 a month. Well, only $10 a month adds up, obviously, over the lifetime of the product. Now, previously, you, would, you could purchase Photoshop for $699 and Adobe updated Photoshop on a pretty regular basis about once every 18 months. And those updates were about uh, 150. And Lightroom was 199 and those updates were less frequent, but I can't remember what the price was of the updates. It was much lower. But anyway, I did some math and after a few years, you are better off buying them standalone than on the Creative Cloud. However, obviously, Adobe wants you on the Creative Cloud and they're gonna make it more and more challenging to buy these standalone versions. As of this recording, you can still purchase Lightroom 6 as a standalone version. If you go to Adobe's website, and I believe you can get there with adobe.com slash Lightroom, you can see all the way buried in the bottom right corner, it says buy Lightroom as opposed to the Creative Cloud program. Uh, Photoshop, I'm not so sure anymore. I actually meant to check before I jumped on here and I'm sorry I did not. So I'm not sure if you can still buy Photoshop as standalone. Okay, as of two years ago, when Adobe first announced the Creative Cloud plan, I was on Lightroom version 5 in Photoshop CS6 and I was perfectly happy. <laughs> and I really did not want to go to the Creative Cloud because I don't like the monthly payment, but I uh, felt like I was kind of forced to because I teach both of these applications. I obviously need to be up to date on the versions, so I had to do it. Uh, so am I happy? Do I like it? I mean, I guess you get, you know, all of the updates are included. You'll hear people say, well, the updates are free. No, it's not free. It's included because you pay $10 a month. So yeah, Photoshop CS6 is the last standalone, Tracy says. Yeah, it's definitely the last standalone for sure, but it's very difficult to find. So good morning, Jessica. Good morning. So anyway, um, I went to Adobe's website and I will post these links below but they're so funny. They have, they have this like, oh, you probably can't see it, but there's this table that shows all of the things you're missing if you're not in the creative cloud, which is really strategic wording. See what you're missing, okay. So it has uh, these columns and rows with everything you're missing. All right, so for instance, I am going to quickly go through the things that are on the Creative Cloud that are not available in Lightroom 5 or Lightroom 6. And I will point out of these which ones actually matter and which ones don't. Uh, so I'm going to give you what's on the Creative Cloud. You can use Lightroom on Mac, PC, iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. This is only a big deal if you use any of the mobile apps. I know one photographer that I mentor that uses Lightroom Mobile. Access the full power of Photoshop CC. Well, they're, they're throwing in this bit about Photoshop, even though we're talking about Lightroom here, but that's because it comes with a $10 a month. Synchronize photos across desktop and devices. Again, only matters if you're using it on mobile devices and your big girl machine. Always stay up to date with the latest photography innovations from Adobe. Oh, thank you. Mm. Uh, so far, I'm reading a lot of fluff. Retouch, cut out, and combine images on mobile with Photoshop Fix. Again, mobile. I don't do any of my editing on mobile. Uh, it just doesn't work out for me. Craft amazing visual stories with direct access to Lightroom photos from Adobe Voice, Slate, and Premiere Clip. Anybody ever heard of any of those and use them? I've heard of them, but I don't use them. Create an elegant custom website to showcase your photography with Adobe Portfolio, don't care. Learn from a library of in-depth videos, don't care. Remove or add atmospheric haze to images. Okay, this is the one thing that I do care about. 
The D. Hayes slider is only available on Lightroom Creative Cloud. Oh, good morning. I'm going to just slam the door. Lightroom Creative Cloud has the D. Hayes slider, but all of the Lightroom standalone versions do not have it, even with their updates. They are intentionally withholding that feature because it's nice. And they're saying, hey, come over to CC because that's the only one that has it. I do care about that. Easily create HDR images, stunning super wide scenes with panoramas. Oh, that's available in Lightroom 6. So no, that was it. So out of that list, the only thing I really care about is the Hayes slider. The Hayes slider is available in CC, not available in Lightroom 6. Beyond that, if you have Lightroom 5 or 6, you are probably doing just fine. And I would not recommend jumping to the Creative Cloud until you need to do so. And at some point you probably will, but if it's not right now, why would you start spending $10 a month if you don't have to? Seems silly to me. Okay, let me go to the Photoshop chart and tell you what Adobe says they have on Photoshop Creative Cloud versus Photoshop CS6. And I, I don't know if I care about any of these, but I'm gonna read them really quickly. These are the things that are available to Photoshop CC but not available if you buy the standalone version of Photoshop. Creative Cloud Libraries, don't care. Artboards, don't care. Integration with Adobe Stock, don't care. New Asset Export, don't even know what that means. Multiple instances of layer styles, that intrigues me because I use layer styles, but I'm not sure what they're referencing. Device Preview and Adobe Preview CC Companion App. Hmm. Glyph Panel, don't care. Real-time Healing Brush, I'll have to check that out. I know that the healing brush gives you a preview of what you are about to heal, but I thought it did it in CS6 as well, but they're saying it does not. Content Aware Move and Content Aware Extend with Scaling and Rotation. Okay, I do care about this one because I use Content Aware Move. I did a video for my friend Nicole Begley's Pet People, and she had two sets of dogs on opposite ends of the photo because they can't be near one another. And I used Content Aware Move to bring them together and it worked beautifully. I do care about that. Automatic Content Aware Fill for stitched panoramic images. I don't do panoramics. Guide Set Creation and Presets. I use guides. I don't know that I need presets for them. Linked Smart Objects. Don't use it. Improved Layer Comps. Eh. Blur Gallery Motion Effects and Additive Noise. Don't care. Focus Mask. Haven't played with smarter smart guides okay so they have smart guides but now they're smarter hmm, prove it desktop fonts for Adobe typekit don't care 3d printing support really don't care font search and instant font preview nope improved Windows 8.1 touch and style support on Mac Windows high DPI support on Mac Mercury Graphics Engine Performance Boost and Healing Brush Smart Sharpen and Up Sampling only matters if you have a brand new machine because you wouldn't have that, uh, that support from your video card. Technology Previews including Design Space Preview. Perspective Warp, oh, that could be handy. Adobe Generator, don't care. All New Smart Sharpen, I haven't really looked at the difference between CS6 Smart Sharpen and CC Smart Sharpen. I like Smart Sharpen, I use it. Uh, I don't I don't know what the big difference is camera shake reduction. Mm, nope. Use a faster shutter speed Adobe camera raw 9 and camera raw as filter huh. Extended features included and in workflow time savers Those are all of the things you're missing out on if you have the standalone version of Photoshop versus CC uh, Only like maybe two or three of those I really care about so what is the bottom line? I gotta wrap this up if you are using a standalone version of Lightroom and Photoshop and it's working for you and you're happy, why would you change it? <laughs> if you don't have any version of Lightroom or Photoshop and you need to purchase them, then you might want to consider doing the Creative Cloud versus buying the standalone. I'm not sure. That's really going to be a personal preference. Ultimately, you are going to have to go to the Creative Cloud because that is where they're putting everyone. That's the direction. I'll tell you why it sort of still bothers me. It really bothered me at the beginning. If you saw me speak about it, woo, I was like, oh no, I do not care for this Creative Cloud. I hate monthly payments. But the reason I was so upset is because I had spent thousands upon thousands of dollars with Adobe in the last 13 years. However, even more importantly than that, who cares about me? was that what Adobe was saying to the hobbyist was, we don't care about you. Because how many hobbyists really want to spend $10 a month to have these applications because it's a hobby? However, 
Hobbyists would buy Lightroom for $199 and own it for their lifetime and use it all the time. But to say to a hobbyist, you have to spend $10 a month on your home, I don't know. I just don't, I feel like they're strong arming us. I don't think it's some strange conspiracy. I just think it made financial sense for their model to do it. I get it. Uh, as a recipient of monthly payments, they must be really happy. But I just don't like to pay them. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you guys have any quick questions on why you would want the Creative Cloud over the standalone versions of Lightroom and Photoshop? I am asked this question all the time. CC has more often, uh, has updates more often than obviously the standalone version. So you get newer features faster. If you care about those features, um, most of them are usually just small updates, um, dot upgrades they call them, really small updates, and a lot of things are performance issues that I really don't care about. The biggest update I saw to Lightroom on the Creative Cloud was the DHA slider, which I already mentioned. I do use it, I do really like it. I have videos, free videos, on the DHA slider, and I also have a free video on how to mimic the effect of the DHA slider if you don't have it. So if you're not on Lightroom CC, you can use, I think I use two or three other sliders in order in order to mimic that DHA's effect. That's on my YouTube channel. That's at weddingsbyheather.tv. You should also check out homesteadheather.tv. That's my personal YouTube channel. Please subscribe and comment because it helps. Carrie says, it was great for me because I was never going to, not anytime soon, have the $1,200 for Photoshop. Photoshop was never $1,200, Carrie. It was $699. It was always $700. Um, you might have been looking at the entire CS Creative Suite, which would have been $1,200. And, by the way, at the time, um, I remember when I bought the first CS, when they came out with the Creative Suite, it was $1,400. However, if you are a teacher or you take a course, you can get, could get, I'm not sure how they work it now, the education discount. I'm pretty sure you can still get it. But at the time, Photoshop was $6.99 and you could get it, oh, I want to say for $3.99 with an education discount. And an education discount could mean you took one of my CCBC classes and you have a receipt proving that you took a class. That makes you a student. You don't have to be a full-time student. You just have to prove that you took a class. By the way, that class does not need to be in Photoshop. If you took any class at any community college, you would have a receipt that you took a class. You could submit that to Adobe and you could get the education discount on all of their products, which was not quite, but close to half off. So, um, yeah, that was good. Any other comments or questions? It's Friday. Are there going to be plans for the weekend? We're having a baby shower tomorrow here at our homestead for my cousin. I'm really excited about that. Ella's coming home from camp today. I have a lot going on. Um, yeah, the discount is significant, Sarah says. Fran says, her Western Digital Passport for Mac, every time I do eject, it will give me a message telling me to force eject. This is after I've closed Lightroom. Is the hard drive getting ready to crash? It doesn't seem more... Okay, um... We're talking about Lightroom and Photoshop CC today, Fran. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with your drive. Pam says, how does the downloadable PS... Oh, you know, that's a good question. People ask that because there's some confusion. You, you don't have to have an internet connection all the time in order to work on the Creative Cloud. You still download the applications to your hard drive. So they are installed locally. I have Photoshop and Lightroom on my hard drive. It's just whenever I want to update, obviously you need a connection to update. So right now my desktop is telling me that there are two updates for the Creative Cloud. So I'll just click on it and let it update and it will update, but they are stored locally on your machine. Tracy has a wedding to photograph. Thank you, Tracy. Hi, Shawnee. Hi, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, the cloud one. Does that make sense, Pam? You still have the software on your machine. You have a license to that software that you purchase and they hit your credit card every month for $10.59 because of tax. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next week.